I'm glad we blunted the uh, changes to capital gains tax. I think we succeeded in keeping the 11,100 tax free allowance, which was definitely under threat. Uh, we saw off the idea of a 50% or a 40% rate, uh, and we got a much better entrepreneur's relief, which is very good for the business community. Uh, so I think um, we've got a lot of what we wanted, but I don't think we have a tax optimizing rate. Um, the Chancellor was implying that after 28% he would collect less revenue. Uh, I think he will find it quite difficult to collect enough revenue at 28%. And I think the, the idea that they're going to collect more income tax is quite a convenient one for them because it means that those of us who will be auditing the results of the 28% CGT, and I hope I'll have some help from all these organizations here to do this, uh, if we discover uh, that uh, he's clearly not maximizing the CGT revenue, we'll then have to deal with the second argument, which is he will say uh, that there's more income tax coming in. I think we need to be a little skeptical uh, about that. But we are going to need more tax reductions in the future to make Britain really tax competitive on the scale we need to pull off the trick. Uh, Graham rightly warned against cutting worthwhile capital expenditure. The Chancellor didn't disguise the fact that he was accepting the brown cuts, and he, he, he wasn't in any way dishonest. He made that clear to all who were listening carefully. And what he has also gone on to say, which I welcome very much, uh, is that they're going to review the whole capital program uh, and the reduced capital program compared with the original Labour targets uh, will be weighted towards those projects and investments that do most good for the future growth of the economy. And they will be looking very carefully at the rates of return on them as well, which should also be a matter of concern to custodians of the public purse, but often wasn't uh, to the previous government. Uh, so I think all of us can be involved in this process, and I hope Graham and his organization and the TPA will be involved, so that the more limited capital budget goes on things that are really worthwhile. There was a lot of wasted capital spending uh, under the previous government, it wasn't income producing, it wasn't return inducing, uh, it was often indulgent spending, sometimes it was even worse than that, it was investment in computer systems that didn't work or got in the way, and if we had fewer of those that could be extremely welcome. Uh, the TPA is worried about the NHS promises and budgets. I can assure the TPA that the new Secretary of State for Health will be attacking the, the back room and, and the overhead very vigorously in exactly the same way that we're told the rest of Whitehall is going to be tackled. And I do agree with the, the government very strongly on this, that if, if they manage to keep uh, NHS spending to just a very small real growth as they measure it, that will be an amazing achievement. That is a much tighter budget proposal for the NHS than I've ever known. It's much tighter than Margaret Thatcher did, much tighter than obviously the last government did. And it still requires a very energetic pursuit of efficiency gains and reductions in overheads because this is one service uh, where demand will carry on rising because most of the service is zero priced. So there is no theoretical limit to how much demand there can be. And they don't want to get into a position where hospitals and GPs are having to say, you arrive too late or we can't accept your demand. And so uh, all the time you have a zero price service, which they are pledged to, you're going to have enormous demand pressures on it. My final point uh, is that I am strongly urging the Chancellor and the government to take the issue of the banks more seriously and to see that uh, whilst they may well be public whipping boys because they're even more unpopular than politicians, uh, they going, are going to have to play an extremely important role in the recovery. And if you take too much money out of them in tax, you will just have more sluggish growth. Uh, you are at the same time through your regulators urging the banks to have more cash and capital before they lend too much. So if you take too much out, you just delay the day when they can lend some more. Uh, my proposal is that we should live the brand. A lot of people now say they want to have counter-cyclical banking regulation rather than pro-cyclical. We clearly had pro-cyclical under the past regime because in the 0507 period, the regulators were relaxing the rules and stoking the credit boom. In 0809, they perversely decided to tighten the credit rules at the bottom of the worst slump we've ever seen and tip more banks into uh, great financial difficulties by their, their crassness. I think they are still uh, being too tough on the banks at this stage of the cycle. Uh, 
I'm criticized by Labour by saying, well, how do you clever clogs know where you are in the cycle? Well, if this isn't somewhere near the bottom of the cycle, God help us. <laughs> what more evidence do they want? This is very clearly close to the bottom of the cycle. It should be upwards from here. It will be upwards more quickly with more prosperity and more jobs if we relax the cash and capital controls on the banks at the moment and we must then remember to rein them in again in a couple of years' time if the thing takes off and starts to work, as I hope it will. But without sorting out the banks, none of this is going to work. Any yeah, advances I, I, on 95? I think 50 billion yeah. is technically very easy. 100 billion is, is possible technically. Uh, if it were a large company and somebody sensible went in as executive chairman, taking 50 billion out wouldn't do any damage to any of the important services whatsoever uh, if they had the authority. Uh, that was why I opened my remarks by saying we have to change the debate. Because all the time we have this debate based upon the parade of the bleeding stumps and the people within the public services highlighting the most embarrassing things possible uh, as their preferred way of carrying out the reductions. And all the time we have a very large number of members of parliament who want to discuss it in these absurd terms, 